me your driver's license. Give me your driver's license, registration. Listen and closely. If not, you will not be going to work today. Simple thing, man. This is how you guys get killed out here, man. Like, registration and what? insurance. Say that again. Did he just again? threaten oh, him? Say what you just registration said. Registration and insurance. You so don't want to give him to why me? Why we get killed? Why we get killed, folks? Okay, okay. okay. Uh, you're going to be famous, though. You're going to be famous. Look at him. Got nothing on me. Pull me over. And threaten to, kill, to shoot me. Threaten to kill me. We're going to court, man. I was appalled when I saw this video, and you should be too. What would prompt someone, let alone a cop, to say that? And that he was willing to say that and had no issues with it underscores the problem of police brutality that we have in this country. Gerard St. Nicholas, who is the motorist in this video, filmed this as he was being pulled over by a Miami cop. But we don't know the Miami cop's name and the police department and the police union isn't releasing it. But we won't be able to see that body camera footage until the investigation is complete. Miami-Dade police sending us a statement today saying in part, the interim director, George A. Perez, immediately initiated an internal affairs investigation to review over 30 minutes of footage captured on the officer's body-worn camera and other evidence. Adding, rest assured, we are committed to transparency and community trust and will address all matters of public concern equitably, fairly, and in accordance with applicable so we have no idea who this guy is. He was pulled over for not wearing a seatbelt. Okay, sure, you should wear your seatbelt, but it's not that big of a deal if you don't. And it certainly doesn't warrant a threat like that. Nicholas was just looking for the registration in his mom's car's glove compartment. And as he was doing so and fumbling around in a car that wasn't his, that cop says, this is how you guys get killed. I mean, that's pretty clear what he was insinuating. And he's doing that to demonstrate the power he has over this man. And you know that dynamic all too well, especially if you're a viewer of this channel. The problem of police brutality and racist extrajudicial killings in the United States is a unique one, a uniquely awful one. We're already on track this year to have more police killings than last year. And last year, cops killed 1,139 people. And organizer and activist Sam Sinyangwe pointed out, this came after the George Floyd uprising and the reforms that came along with it. You know, we had a national conversation around police brutality in 2020. If you were on the fence after seeing George Floyd's murder, there was no question that this was a problem. And you know, a lot of people that I know, and I'm sure you knew, who were usually would mince words or were cagey about how they felt on the issue, really let it all out. They acknowledged. This is a problem because objectively, that video showed it was. It's rare that any cop who kills somebody is punished. But in that moment, nationally, we had a collective understanding. Immediate polling data after that showed that a vast majority of the country felt the policing in the United States should be reformed. That's a good thing. But here we are two years later, and we're probably going to see more people killed by police than last year. So it's frustrating because Democrats glommed onto it for optics reasons. You know, they knelt with the kente cloths, they had all of these press conferences and photo ops, and they talked about how serious of an issue this was for them. But then they turned around and didn't do anything. And then this year at the State of the Union, Joe Biden screamed, we need to fund the police. The answer is not to defund the police, it's to fund the police. Fund them. No. Absolutely not. We need to take surplus resources from the police and reallocate them into different aspects of the community. We don't need an armed cop who is trained to shoot first and ask questions later, showing up to every incident in the community. It only guarantees escalation when there doesn't need to be any. What we need is a holistic review of how we govern ourselves, how we look out for one another, how we do neighborhood watch, how we do mutual aid, how we have social services in our communities that meet people's needs, not having somebody with a gun in every circumstance. We don't need that. If we continue to ignore this problem where cops kill over a thousand people before a trial every single year, it's only going to get worse. They're not going to police themselves. 
They're not going to reform on their own volition. We have to do it ourselves.